The latest research into the potential causes of Alzheimer's shows a lack of vitamin B1 may lead to the disease, as well as other forms of dementia. Here to discuss his study at the Burke Medical Research Institute is Dr. Gary Gibson, who has spent decades studying Alzheimer's and other age-related diseases. Dr. Gibson, welcome. You are leading this NIH-funded clinical study. Tell us what your team of researchers have discovered so far. It's also supported by the Alzheimer Drug Discovery Foundation. Uh, the, in Alzheimer's disease, one of the things that always happens is you have a reduced glucose and oxygen use to the brain. So many people think this is just a secondary effect of the disease, but we think that it's primary. And so it seems that vitamin B1 is, is right, and, connected to that? Right, and so in our studies then of, uh, <clears throat> in autopsy brain studies, we find that uh, most vitamin B1 dependent processes are deficient. And if you make animal models uh, deficient in vitamin B1, you create a pathology that's very similar to what happens in Alzheimer's disease. So that comes first, the deficiency in the vitamin B1 comes first and then the lack of glucose follows. Right. Okay, and so what has your study found about normal or good memory loss as opposed to bad memory loss? Well, so bad memory loss, I guess you would define as Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And so we, we don't see vitamin B1 deficiency in the brains of people with good memory loss. And what is good memory loss? Well, no, so I, this is, <laughs> I think good memory loss is just normal memory, or memory forgetting. Right, which yeah. we all have which we go all through have, of right. any age, so, correct? Yes, Alzheimer's disease is very different than that. Than that. And so right. when should a person become alarmed or worried about their memory loss? Well, it would be bad enough that if you go to a clinic, there are memory, many, many memory evaluation clinics. Mm -hmm. If you go to one of these clinics, they can tell you if your memory is severe enough to have Alzheimer's disease. But there are many other causes of these kinds of memory deficits. And so then you can test. As part of our study, we, you can now screen for some of the pathologies of AD. So if you have a bad memory and you don't have those pathologies, you still have a, something bad happening, but it's not Alzheimer's disease. Right, and so the research that you're doing now that shows, that seems to show this link mm -hmm. between vitamin B1 deficiency and Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. could that portend, what would the future of this research be? Would, would people just take vitamin B1 to stave off Alzheimer's? Well, so what we're, we have a clinical trial going right now. So just if you just take vitamin B1, it's not a very good therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And so there's a compound that we give to the patients that raises thiamine much higher than thiamine itself. I'm sorry, vitamin B1. Okay. Uh, much higher than vitamin B1. And it keeps it high for a long time. Right. And so the animal studies show it's very effective for preventing Alzheimer's type pathologies. So I know that your study is ongoing, but at this stage, would you recommend people to preemptively take vitamin B1? So vitamin B1 itself isn't a very good therapeutic. It, so, Even if you haven't yet developed any right. symptoms? Well, most of us get a lot of our flowers supplemented with vitamin okay. B1. So normal uh, people on a normal diet generally get enough vitamin B1. Okay. And we think that maybe there are vitamin B1 dependent processes in the brain that are altered in Alzheimer's disease. And you need a lot more of it to maintain normal uh, brain function. So would you recommend that people get these super vitamin B1? Supplements? You probably have had interviews here on the American <laughs> health food store industry. And so many times if you go to these health food stores, mm -hmm. they won't have any of the compound that you're interested in. And also many of them have toxic compounds. Ah, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> so this isn't a very healthy way to, to supplement your diet. But do you think your research will lead in the near future to supplements that could be useful? Right, the one we're using is our therapeutic, we think could be but this is generally a, useful. But it's not available to the public yet. It, it could be, it people could be. can buy it at a, oh, public, at a health food store. Okay. Uh, but it wouldn't be screened by FDA standards, so right. it would be a little risky. At this point, right? At this point, yeah. right. But you've seen some positive results in your study so far. Oh, well, we haven't broken any code in our Alzheimer trial. Mm -hmm. We know in the animal studies it's remarkably effective. Right. But in general, animal studies aren't very predictive of human results. So. And, and speaking of humans, you are looking for some participants for the Absolutely. study, correct? Right. What, who's your ideal <laughs> subject? So you want somebody that has a mild, cognitive, a mild memory impairment mm -hmm. if they're too far along it's unlikely that you can bring their brains back to life. And so somebody around 60 that has mild memory impairment. Okay, so how can a potential candidate learn more you about this? Just the go trial? to uh, burke.org mm -hmm. and there's a full description of the trial there. 
also on the clinicaltrials.gov. It's fully described there as well. All right, fascinating research right. that you're doing, Doctor. Thank you so much okay. for being with us today. Thank you very much.